Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and it's time to do another Banggood.com review on this tubular lock cutting machine. So, a bit of a preface, uh, Banggood.com asked me whether I'd like to do some reviews, I get to choose equipment, and I, I always choose stuff which I think is going to be good, and that I have some confidence in, and uh, I get to keep it if I do a review, so uh, that's always good too. So, this is a, well, this box, which um, is now empty, um, is a the container for this tubular key cutting tool. What's a tubular key? Well, um, let's put that over there. This is a tubular lock, this is a tubular key. So usually they have about seven pins. You put the lock in, this one actually uh, rotates um, um, counterclockwise. There you go, anticlockwise, there you go. And they're quite standard. Um, you see these all over the places, um, vending machines, bike locks, cabinets, you name it really. They're, they're relatively ubiquitous. Some are good, some are bad. But getting the keys cut can be a bit tricky. Um, not all locksmiths actually cut tubular keys. Plus, if you're a hobbyist and um, you're interested in, in keys and locks, or even maybe a locksmith on the go, you might want to have a, a relatively low cost uh, solution for cutting tubular keys, assuming of course you have tubular key blanks. And that's where this key cutting machine comes in. It's actually at uh, 40 pounds at the moment, and look in the description, um, the price changes depending on the day. And of course there's a discount as well uh, in the description too, so please follow the link, go check out the uh, the discounts as well. So there's the tubular key, blank, there's the cut one and if we have a look we can see how cut into the metal here are little scallops taken away and they're different heights, that's the key bitting. Obviously the, the ones which are cut deeper into the key push the pins in the lock, these things, down less far as the ones which are a, like a one cut like this which are almost like a zero cut and they push the pins nearly all the way down. So how do we go from this to a cut key, well this to a cut key, we use this machine. There we go, very much like the schematic on the front of the box isn't it? My first impressions when I got this was how on earth does this work, what is it, I don't understand uh, but also, wow, this looks really cool. It's, it's weighty. I think it's a solid aluminium. It's, it looks really cool. Uh, I, yeah, I really liked it. You'll also notice that uh, it's been debranded. I don't know why. Um, not so much on the sizing key here. Curious, huh? Okay, so we'll come on to how this works in a second. The first thing you need to do, apart from securing a blank and having your tool, is measuring the key bitting. So always go anti-clockwise. So this is uh, pin one, two, three, four, five, all the way around to seven. Interestingly, this measuring device seems to have the numbers a bit backwards on it, but that doesn't really matter because, um, you know, we're clever enough to know that the smallest one would be one and it goes up incrementally all the way to size eight. What we're looking at is the difference in height between the flat of the metal and this sort of peak. How do we use the measurement? Well, I know that pin one is a cut one because I put this here and I can see that resting on the depth of the cut um, I've got a nice fit here. If I turn it to two and do it you'll see that there's a gap. I don't know how big a gap, it's probably about two tenths of a millimetre, something like that. If you see a gap if I went up another size to three you'll see that it's way way out. There you go. So let's go along. So we, we think it's um, Cut one, one, three, three, one, one, three, three. I think that's not quite deep enough. One, one, three, three. There, yeah, that's better. One, one, three, three, six. And then, if I remember rightly. Yeah. So one, one, three, 
three, six, one, four. Okay, always good to double check as well. So once you know the combination, come over to the machine. It looks impenetrable. Actually, it's really, really simple and very clever. Here is a flat cutting bit that goes all the way through the tool on the center. Hopefully this isn't just a review, it's a how-to guide. Um, then we have a dial. Now this is seven. Seven being the deepest cut. Um, there we go. And you'll see that seven allows this to go all the way through, all the way through to the other side. There we go. To a really nice deep depth. In fact, if we get seven, I wonder if I can show you. So it's a no, I can't because I can't get the key in. But yeah, it will cut to exactly that depth. Okay. Now watch this. If I turn it to look at the line to a number one cut. There we go. It's provided spacing. That spacing means it can't cut as deep. So you can now see. Look, the cutting bit is only a tiny bit out. So that's that's like super cool to begin with. Okay, I really like that. Then. If you're going to put the key blank in, let's take this out for now, put the key blank in and make sure it's all aligned. So one is here and it should be the center. You can see all the way through. Can you see all the way through? There we go. So that's position one. Now we put this back on top and it only goes on one way and no doubt I'll get it the wrong way first. And you'll see that uh, there's a slot in the top to align it with. Okay. Now, once you've aligned it, you can see that one, if you do it properly, is there. One lines up if I turn it it clicks to two clicks to three clicks to four clicks to five so start with um with one if you don't know for sure then pop this tool in all the way and if it doesn't go in then turn it back on until it does there we go so we go and you can see that uh, the tool there is on position one quite easily okay so, and this is where it gets fun. So that's position one. It'd be nice if I had a mark there, really. I could always um, scratch one in with a tool. Um, so let's just check. So the key is facing down like this. So the first cut is, ignore the numbers there, is a one, one. So we dial it in. At the moment, it's on seven. So we turn it to one. So we know that it's in position one. Okay, so it's in position one, the cut's on position one. You hold it. Uh, I like to use a grip like this. And then you basically screw this in, making sure you don't turn this by accident to, to another setting, because that will not be useful. And you basically turn it, and you should feel it go. And then when it reaches full depth, it will stop. Sure, I've got this all right. Yeah, there we go. Hear that? And it goes sort of free once it's cut down. Now, we don't need to move this because we know the next cut is a one as well. If you really want to be um, uh, really super safe, always double check what you're doing. Always, always, always. Because you only get one chance with this, and then you have to try and find another blank. So, this is another. Uh, one, the first cut. So, remove, retract the tool slightly, turn the key, one click. There we go, push the tool in. There we go. So I think we're good to go. Make sure it's on one still, must be on one. Uh, make sure you put some tension between these two and turn it again. Hear that? Then nothing. But only a small amount because it's only cutting a tiny bit off. Okay. I'll actually cut the whole thing. It's nicely. So I think that is a three, three. So I'll do those two in quick succession. Retract out, turn to three. Next position is a three. Slide all the way down. Retract 
subtract out, turn it again, make sure it hasn't moved. And then we're good to go again. Yeah, double check. Okay, so that's 1133. You might see little bits of metal uh, falling out here. That's actually a good sign you're trying to cut it. 1133. This one, was that a 5 or a 6? I think it was a 6, actually. I think it was quite deep. Yeah, that looks to me like a 6 cut there. So, retract out. So you see, see it's cut all the way down, so pull this out, turn it one, go to six. So you can see it's quite close in now, it's almost as deep as it gets. Okay, this should take a little longer to screw in now. And we're good, so that's a nice deep cut. Then I believe that we had a one after the six and then a four. There we go. Yep, shortest one followed by a I think that's a four. I don't think it's a five. No, it's a four. So one and then four. So retract back out. Go back to a where's the a one, turn the key, all the way in, and that was done, retract out, turn it one last time, and turn it to four, and this should be the final position, if we're right, we've got it all sorted. And we're good to go. Right, take the key out. Let's have a look what we did. Pull some of these burrs. And let's before we try it in the lock, let's actually have a look here and see where we are. So one one three three six one and four. Four. Okay, well let's try it. Might be a bit rough to begin with, but yep. Yeah. Oh, my fingers are in the way. <laughs> it was a lot easier. I was holding onto the cam. Uh, okay, so there you go. Yeah, it works uh, smooth as butter. It really does. Um, so yeah, I, I was very impressed with this actually when I first did it. Um, and just did it live on camera again, and it works as far as I can tell fine. I uh, really like this. If you are a hobbyist, maybe a locksmith who does a few light jobs on um, on tubular keys um, or anything in between. I, I actually quite like this. I don't know about its longevity, I couldn't tell you about that, but uh, I, I do know that it works and I can prove it works and that is pretty good for me. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. I really find this interesting. I've never seen anything like it before. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Um, I will probably use this again in another video or two, I think. I, yeah, I really like this one. All right, see you soon. See you next time.